Hello everybody and welcome to our sixth video of Unit 1. In this video we're going to discuss dimensional analysis. You will be learning how to set up problems and use conversion factors to convert one measurement into a, another measurement with a different unit. Dimensional analysis is really just a big word for a technique for solving problems of conversions. And um, we're going to use this technique when we are converting from one measurement to another. Uh, a lot of times students see the word dimensional analysis and they often get nervous about uh, doing problems with it. But once you learn the technique, it's actually a very simple process to follow. Here are the steps for dimensional analysis. Step one, write down the given number and unit. You will always be given a number with a unit to start out with. You're going to write that down. Then you're going to, in step two, draw a t-chart. And this is what a t-chart looks like. Just like this. You may have seen them before. So after we've written down the given number and unit, we then draw a t-chart. Once we've drawn our t-chart, then we need to take a moment and determine the conversion factor that's needed. We're going to use the conversion factor that will cancel out the original unit and lead us into the unit that we're trying to convert to. Once we've determined the conversion factor, and you'll use a uh, conversion list that I've given you or will be giving you in class, so you don't have to memorize conversion factors. Um, you just need to learn to pick the correct one when setting up the problem. And then finally, once you have your conversions put into the t-chart, you're going to multiply the numbers on the top and you'll divide all the numbers on the bottom to get your final answer. Your units should cancel. And that's the whole point of dimensional analysis. We want our units to cancel when we're setting up our t-chart. The best way to learn dimensional analysis is really to practice it. So we're going to do a few examples and then I have a few practice problems that you're going to try on your own. And then in class we're going to spend a day or two practicing several different uh, worksheets and problems with dimensional analysis so that you really get some time to practice this um, on your own. So first of all, how many seconds are in 16 years? You could probably do this in your head without setting up the t-chart. But I wanted to use a real simple example to get you started. Step one was to write down your given number in unit. So our given number in unit is the 16 years. We're going to write down 16, and then I'm just going to abbreviate years with YR. Step two was to draw our t-chart. So we'll start out drawing our t-chart here. We don't know how big our t-chart is. We may need to expand onto it, and that's fine. Um, that's We can do that as we go along. Next is figuring out the conversions. Well, we know that years have days, which have hours, which have minutes, which have seconds. So we're going to need to fit into our entire t-chart going from years to days to hours to minutes to seconds. So first of all, what I always suggest that you do is set up your unit so that they cancel. Our unit here is year, which is on the top of the t-chart or the fraction. So to cancel it out, we need to put the year on the bottom of the t-chart or fraction. Then we can take that from year to days on top. Once you have it set up where your unit will cancel, you can fill in your numbers. So there's 300, and we'll just say 65 days in one year. Now our days is our new unit now that we've canceled out, but we don't want to stay at, at days. We want to go to seconds. So to cancel out days, which is on top of the fraction, we need to put days on the bottom, and we're going to put hours on top. So see, we need to extend our t-chart here. And again, in one day, there's 24 hours. Our days cancel. And we have hours. We don't want to stop at hours, so we need to put hours on the bottom, minutes on top. And then we'll also need to add a, a block here, which is going to be interesting because it's going to run into what I already have, which is fine because we want to end in seconds. So let me just erase this here. 
So in one hour, there's 60 minutes. Hours cancel. We want minutes on the bottom, so it cancels out, and one minute is 60 seconds. So you see how our T-chart is. We're going to use our conversion factors and put them into um, fractions. One year equals 365 days. So if you notice that most of our conversions will be written with equal sign, our equal sign can really be replaced with the fraction bar in our T-chart. So one year equals 365 days if you think of that fraction line as an equal sign. Now that we have this all set up and we've chosen the correct conversions, which was number three step, number four is to go through. We're going to multiply all of the numbers on the top and then go through and divide all the numbers on the bottom. When plugging it into the calculator, our answer comes out to be five. Oh, let me get my pen. Sorry. It's five zero four five seven six zero 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 seconds is our calculator answer. But what's important for us to remember is our sig figs. And if you think back to our sig fig video, you were told that exact numbers are not included in determining sig figs. Well, in one year is exactly 365 days, one day exactly 24 hours, one hour exactly 60 minutes, one minute exact, um, exactly 60 seconds. So anytime we use a conversion, we're not going to use that in determining sig figs. So we're not going to use this for sig figs, not going to use this, not going to use this, not going to use this. So the only thing that is left for us to use is our original number. When we are um, doing dimensional analysis, we're going to look at the original number we're given and use the number of sig figs in that number to write our answer with correct number of sig figs. Our number of sig figs are 2, 1, 2. So our answer will be 5, 0, line above the 0, and then we're going to have 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 seconds. You can put in your commas if you want. So that's 500 billion seconds in 15 years. I mean, there's 500 billion seconds in 16 years. Let's do another example uh, following the steps in our dimensional analysis process. Step one is to write down the number that's given. That would be 3.25 kilometers. The question is asking us how many feet are in 3.25 kilometers. So step one, write down your given. Then you're going to create a T box. And we need to get to feet. Uh, for this example, I've given the conversions that you're going to use. You're going to need to go through and determine how to set them up so that the units cancel. Um, uh, when you're practicing on your own, you will be using the conversion chart and you will decide which conversion factors to use. So step three, here are our conversion factors. Let's decide how to put them in. If we want to cancel kilometers, we need to write kilometers on the bottom. And up here, kilometers go to mile. We've done this so this cancels. Now we can fill in our number. The number in front of kilometers is 1.0 and the number in front of miles is 0.621. That is an exact number. And one kilometer is 0.621 mile. Now we're at a mile. We need to go from miles to feet. So in one, we're going to look at miles going down here and feet up here. In one mile, 1.0 mile, we have 5,280 feet. Now we've done step three, placing our conversions, choosing and placing them correctly. Now step four, we're going to go through and take 3.25 times 6, uh, 0.621 times 5,280 divided by 1 divided by 1 and it's going to equal from our calculator 10656.36 feet. But remember we need to look at our number of sig figs. We will not use our conversions so we're going to use the numbers here which will be 3.25, that's three sig figs. We need three sig figs here, one, two, three. Remember, the five will round the six up. 
this will be 107. And because there's two places left before the decimal place, we need to add zeros there and then add feet. So our correct answer will be uh, 10,700 feet in 3.25 kilometers. We need to keep track of our sig figs because we're using measurements here. We cannot just uh, put in what our calculator answer is. We need to go that one extra step. Now that we've done a few example problems in the video, go ahead and take a few minutes and write down these problems in your notebook. Try to go through and complete the problems on your own uh, before class and see if you can follow the steps. Remember, you're going to write down the given value, create a t-chart, use the conversions and set them up in the t-chart to cancel units, and then the last thing you're going to do is go through and multiply all the values on the top and divide all the values on the bottom. Now, if you are not able to set up the t-chart or figure out how to put your units in, that's okay. We will be practicing in class, but I really would like you to give it a try on your own. So go ahead and write down the problems now, pause the video, and try the problems on your own and see how you do. And I'll see you in class.